Let's expand on the concept of proportionality in the context of self-defense during a violent demonstration. Proportionality in self-defense refers to the principle that the level of force used in response to a threat must be appropriate and commensurate with the threat faced. It requires that individuals do not use excessive force or respond with greater force than is reasonably necessary to neutralize the threat and protect themselves or others from harm. The use of force must be reasonable under the circumstances, considering factors such as the severity of the threat, the likelihood of harm, and the availability of alternative means of defense or escape. Reasonable force may vary depending on the specific situation, and what is considered reasonable can be assessed from the perspective of a reasonable person facing similar circumstances. Individuals must avoid using excessive force in self-defense, particularly when responding to non-lethal threats. Responding to a minor physical altercation with deadly force may not be considered proportionate or justifiable. The response should be calibrated to the level of danger posed by the aggressor. Responding with disproportionate force can escalate the situation and increase the risk of harm to oneself and others. It's essential to use only the amount of force necessary to stop the threat and ensure personal safety, rather than escalating the conflict further. Proportionality distinguishes between retaliatory actions and defensive actions. Self-defense is based on the need to protect oneself or others from harm, rather than seeking revenge or retribution against the aggressor. Actions taken in self-defense should be defensive in nature and aimed at stopping the threat, rather than inflicting harm for its own sake. When assessing proportionality, courts consider the specific circumstances of the situation, including the nature of the threat, the physical abilities of the individuals involved, and any other relevant contextual factors. What may be considered proportionate in one situation may not be in another, and the assessment is made on a case-by-case -case basis. The use of deadly force, such as firearms, is subject to particularly stringent standards of proportionality. Deadly force should only be used in response to an imminent threat of death or serious bodily harm when no lesser means of self-defense are available. Even then, the use of deadly force must be justified as reasonable and necessary under the circumstances. Understanding and adhering to the principle of proportionality is essential for individuals involved in violent demonstrations to ensure that their actions in self-defense are lawful and justifiable. It requires careful judgment and restraint to use only the amount of force necessary to protect oneself or others without escalating the situation unnecessarily. Understanding the difference between retaliation and defense is crucial in the context of self-defense during a violent demonstration. Here's an expansion on this concept. Retaliation involves responding to an attack or provocation with the intent of causing harm or seeking revenge against the aggressor. It is an aggressive and offensive action aimed at inflicting punishment or harm in response to a perceived wrong or injury. Motive. Retaliation is driven by emotions such as anger, resentment, or a desire for retribution. It is not necessarily motivated by the need to protect oneself or others from harm, but rather by a desire to retaliate against the perceived aggressor. Intent to harm. In cases of retaliation, the primary intent is to cause harm or inflict injury on the aggressor, rather than to neutralize the threat or prevent further harm. The focus is on getting even rather than ensuring personal safety or defending against an imminent threat. Lack of proportionality. Retaliatory actions may involve the use of excessive force or disproportionate responses to the initial provocation. The level of force used is often driven by the desire to inflict harm rather than by a reasoned assessment of the threat posed. Escalation. Retaliatory actions can escalate conflicts and violence, turning a confrontation into a cycle of retaliation and counter-retaliation. This escalation can result in greater harm to all parties involved and may lead to further violence and unrest. Defense, on the other hand, involves protecting oneself or others from harm in response to an imminent threat or attack. It is a reactive and defensive action aimed at neutralizing the threat and ensuring personal safety rather than seeking revenge. Motive. The primary motive behind self-defense is to protect oneself or others from harm and to prevent further escalation of violence. It is driven by the need for self-preservation and the desire to avoid or minimize harm rather than by emotions such as anger or vengeance. Intent to neutralize threat. 
In self-defense, the focus is on neutralizing the threat posed by the aggressor and stopping the attack. The goal is to de-escalate the situation and ensure personal safety rather than to inflict harm for its own sake. Proportionate response. Self-defense requires using only the amount of force that is reasonably necessary to stop the threat and ensure personal safety. The level of force used is proportionate to the level of danger posed by the aggressor and is aimed at achieving a swift resolution to the confrontation. Avoidance of further conflict. Self-defense actions are aimed at resolving the immediate threat and avoiding further conflict or harm. Once the threat has been neutralized, the focus shifts to ensuring personal safety and seeking assistance or de-escalating the situation rather than pursuing further aggression. The key difference between retaliation and defense lies in the motive and intent behind the actions taken. Retaliation involves seeking revenge or inflicting harm in response to a perceived wrong, while defense involves protecting oneself or others from harm in response to an imminent threat. Understanding this distinction is essential for individuals involved in violent demonstrations to ensure that their actions are lawful and justified.